This is one of the most anticipated albums in recent memory. Of course, I'm referring to the self-titled album from Ishan. This, his eighth studio album, has created quite a stir with the fact that beyond the metal release, there is also a full orchestral release. Overall, there are moments of blistering black metal as we have come to expect from Ishan. But to label this album as a black metal album would be misleading. Possibly progressive black metal, if there is such a genre. And if there isn't, there is now. And this would be the consummate example of it. I would say, for Ishan, his magnum opus. The album begins with a short orchestral piece that, along with several others, move the album along. Time does not permit a full expose of each track. There is simply far too much variety. What you will find on this album is heavily orchestrated songs, with the telltale guitar tones and vocals of Ishan. But you will also get incredibly sophisticated prog pieces, guitar tones constructed for the needs within a song, and epic and emotional tracks laced with fury and darkness. The thing that stood out to me was the use of clean vocals. That is nothing new in black metal, and with the heavy prog influences it is not surprising, but the level of maturity in them is what was astonishing. For each song that includes clean vocals, it is clear they were designed for that song and that mood and those needs and desires. It is not the one-size-fits-all approach that we typically find when an extreme band inserts clean vocals. There are several standout tracks, including the single Twice Born. However, the track that I kept uttering wow after each listen is A Taste of Ambrosia. That song really captures the heart of this album. The only track I found my mind wandering each time I listened was Hubris and Blue Devils. However, this probably says more about my tastes than the song itself. I suspect this will be a favorite track for many people, just far too into the prog realms for my metal mind. If there were one thing I would wish in this album that is missing, it would be that the excellent orchestral tracks were connected to the surrounding songs rather than standalone pieces. They feel out of place without that connection. But in the end, this is an impressive album. And for those with the musical acumen to enter an album for the listening experience rather than to simply bang their head off, this is a journey well worth taking. Hey, this is Mike Wiebe, and I'm the singer in a band called The Riverboat Gamblers. And I'm Zach Blair. I play guitar in a band called Rise Against. Mike and I also have a band called The Draculas, and we also have this great, amazing new podcast called Zach and Mike Make Three. Yeah, each week we're going to ask ourselves and we're going to ask our guests what three favorite things they are into at that moment or in their entire lives. And then we're either going to agree with them or we're going to make fun of them. And uh, you're going to listen to it and you're going to like it or we will make fun of you. How about that? I just flipped it on you, the person listening to this right now. But we're going to do it every week here on the Sound Talent Network. Once again, it's called Zach and Mike Make Three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>